Hello and welcome to another episode of The Silver Show. Today we are joined by a motivational guest who has spoken all across the world and we may even get him to perform live in the studio for us. That's all coming up on The Silver Show. Welcome our guest today. I'd like to touch on a topic as to whether or not Jamaica should drop the Queen as its head of state. Yes, I said that. And to run as a democratic republic government. With a new Prime Minister, Hanj Olnes, coming into office in Jamaica, this is likely to be a topic that rears back up. However, Jamaica does not stand alone on this matter. Amongst others is Barbados, where their Prime Minister, the Honorable Frindle Stewart, last year stated it is an aim for his party in time for the country's 50th anniversary this year. So I ask you this, is it time for Jamaica and its compatriot countries to achieve the full circle of independence? Is it time we had a presidency rather than premiership subject to surveillance by Britain? Is this vision practical or even feasible? Or are there still gains, if any, to be found in our current state of government? Share your views by commenting below and, of course, on our social media page, which are on screen now. Joining us today, we have Mr. Audley Astwood, who hails from the beautiful British dependent territory of the Turks and Caicos Islands, TCI. He's a motivational speaker, a poet, and has just founded TCI Arrow, which he'll be finding out more about today. Welcome to the show, Audley. Thank you. It's good to be here. Fantastic. Now, did you travel all the way to the UK? Yes, I traveled all the way to the UK. I love uh, visiting uh, mm. London. I used to live here up until about yes. 2012. Yes. Um, I moved back to Turks and Caicos Islands, yes. and I'm also a British citizen, so I continue to come back and forth. Um, it's a beautiful country, and I continue to learn new things about being here in the UK. But mm. surprisingly enough, most citizens uh, here in the UK don't even know the Turks you and Caicos exist. Was, I was just about to say that because when I ask you, are you coming, did you come to the UK? Because people might say Turks and Caicos may be one of these, um, like, um, what should I say? Um, Eastbourne or <laughs> Brighton or whatever like that because there are so many areas in the UK that people do not know of. So that's fantastic you said that, that is the Turks and Caicos known as a British dependent interpreter. But at the same time, what's a new name for it? It's not called British Dependent Territories anymore, is it? Right. Um, the, the government mm -hmm. uh, here in the UK, um, they had an initiative to uh, foster a better working relationship with the overseas yes. territories. So we are mm -hmm. now known as overseas states. Overseas so states, yes. we'll be considered more like how Puerto Rico is to the US. And the difference with that, because one might say, well, there's not much of a difference just in, um, in name. But when they made the Turks and Caicos an overseas state, yes. they made it. Uh, the, they put the option on the table, so to speak, for the citizens of the <coughs> overseas uh, states to become full-fledged uh, with a citizen, yes. which I uh, took up. Okay, fantastic. So, okay, that's good. So you used to be an officer at the Royal Turks and Caicos Police Force. Yes. Um, what sparked the changes to you now becoming getting into motivational speaking? Well, I'll, I'll start off by saying that... Is it that you um, don't, your parents you sort, of, you sort of talk a lot? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interject. Well, well Karen, my no, no. father's a career <laughs> politician. I Probably that's where I, I, I get it from. But yes. I, I wanted to be a police officer from mm -hmm. the age of seven. You know, that's something that I always wanted to do. And I had the unfortunate accident while on the job, and I was given an option well, actually, not much of an option. I was told because of the medication I was yes. taking at the time that was thinning my blood that it wouldn't suit being in the police force, taking this medication and run the risk of being uh, shot or stabbed. Yeah. I would bleed to death about four to five times quicker mm -hmm. than the average person. So reluctantly, um, I had to get a career change. Yes, yes. Um, I, I saw the positive part of it because I was up, up to that point, I was a college dropout. Mm -hmm. I decided to send myself back to college, get a degree, mm -hmm. and I got into the field of uh, broadcasting. I used to manage a, a radio station, yes. uh, the government sold radio station back home, Radio Turks and Caicos, okay. for quite some time. Right. And from there, um, I got an opportunity to work in other government 
departments such as uh, the public relations manager for yes. the Turks and Caicos Tourist Board, which oversaw the, uh, me working for the entire country yes. and promoting it to the world. Um, from there, uh, I got an opportunity to move to the UK where I stayed for about two and a half years um, before going back to the Turks and Caicos and eventually joining back with the police force. Okay. But this time, not as a, a police officer, so to speak, doing investigations, but also the public relations side of it. So, so you like was an information attached here or something like that? Right. right. So on a daily basis, I would speak to the news media, from TV to radio, the newspaper. So it's a really exciting job. Is that where TCI Arrow came from, that organization which you started? Is the media house you started? Yes. TCI um, Arrow? Right. When I look... Uh, the present media houses, I saw uh, gaps so that wasn't being filled. Yes. So I decided that mm. with my publication, I would focus on things that were not being done. Mm. Having lived here in the UK for two and a half years, mm. yeah. um, I looked at different publications that I like. For example, the, the Evening Standard um, was one of those that I, I, I liked, um, and I took some concepts from what they were doing. Yeah. Also, some concepts from USA Today and other publications sort of molded together. Is it, is it paper or is it going to be online? Right now, it's um, paper, but I'm about to do something bold in the Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. Now, I know print media is pretty much dying here in the UK, and that's because the young people are killing paper. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is on their, their, an electronic device, be yeah. it their cell phone yeah. or yeah. tablet, whatever yeah. have you. But back in the Turks and Caicos, um, most people are still addicted to paper, so yes. it's a tough sell. But so there's I a know, transition process, or there's, is it that they are, they're not backwards, is it? <laughs> no, it's not that. that. Yeah. Um, you, have, you have a lot of people who are on their mobile, but they still cling on to the paper. Right. And, for me, the, the, I think the toughest sell, mm -hmm. not so the, the reading public, but the advertisers. Yes. The advertisers are holding on to the old way because I'm telling them that people, more people are on the electronic devices mm -hmm. today, but they're like, yeah, 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 but we want this in print. So, so Okay, so what is the meaning of TCI? The Turks and Caicos Islands. Oh, ter oh <laughs> Turks and Caicos Islands. And Arrow is the media house which you're creating and stuff like that. Right, and the reason for choosing Arrow, because it's news that always hit the mark. Mm -hmm. You know, working in the police department, you know, oftentimes I'll see a different media house mm -hmm get the, the, the story wrong. And I understand a news where everyone has this urgency to be the first out. Yes. With yes. the arrow, the focus is not being the first mm -hmm. out. The focus is being the first out who has it accurate. Wow. So that's why we hit so, the mark. So, so are you, like in Jamaica now, they're talking about like um, celebrity journalists and there's a new fair of journalists going on. Is it that you're trying to, what, what are you trying to achieve then by this angle? Well. Pretty much, uh, I want to be a reliable news mm. source. I think it's, mm. it's disappointing for people, you know, people rely on the news. And, and when you put something in print yeah. and people read it, you know, we're not the, the National Enquirer. I don't yeah. have a budget for, for yeah. being sued on a weekly mm. basis. When I put the news out there, I want that information to be the truth. The whole Fantastic. truth, nothing but the truth. Order, let, let's touch on that opening remark which I mentioned about the Queen Elizabeth being the head of state for countries like Turks and Caicos and still like Jamaica. Do you think the Queen should still be the head of state? Simple. Well, the answer for that is, is simple, yes, and I'll tell you why. Mm. Um, head I of think, state for Turks and Caicos and yes, Jamaica? Or yes. Like okay. um, I think that you know the Turks and Caicos Islands, as well as Jamaica, um, have a wonderful relationship with Britain. I think there are a number of things that we are afforded being yes. that the Queen is our head of state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for us to know, well, for Turks and Caicos, mm -hmm. and uh, especially to no longer have the Queen as the head of state, uh, and Turks and Caicos is a unique situation. We mm -hmm. don't have our own currency. We use the American currency, and I think um, that I mean, the dollar. beautiful relationship that yeah. Britain has with America has allowed us to use that, the privilege of using their dollar yeah. in our economy, for mm -hmm. example, because um, most of our goods is imported, it's not mm -hmm. manufactured, like how Jamaica and mm -hmm. here manufacture their own goods. Mm -hmm. So to have that ease with the US dollar, just for one of the examples, yeah. not to mention 
the Queen provides uh, external security for the Turks and Caicos Islands. Yeah. Say, for example, we are invaded or someone tries to invade us, we have the British uh, Royal Navy uh, at our side. So what, so what you're trying to say then is that you guys do not want to move forward? Well, I wouldn't say it necessary as a means of moving forward. I think the relationship is beautiful. Um, there are some changes that could be made, yeah. but to totally move away from, uh, from Britain, I wouldn't mm -hmm. support that. Oddly, listen, only a few short years ago, you know, your country was described um, as one where corruption was very prevalent. And how close to the truth um, is that really? Well, back in 2009, Sir Robin Auld um, held a commission of inquiry, yes. and with his findings, he deemed that there was widespread corruption mm -hmm. um, within members of government in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Yes. And that trial is going on at this moment here right. um, in the Turks and Caicos. Right. So therefore, what, I, what I'm picking up then, and, and, and of course, a lot of persons who are like Pan-Africanists would want to say, hang on a second, are you guys just hanging around in the periphery? You need to really move on because by the Queen being the head of state doesn't seem to be doing much difference. So therefore, shouldn't it really just be just going for the big plunge? Well, on the other hand, you may have others who would say because of the Queen, they were able to have this intervention yes. and stop the corruption that was there. Mm -hmm. That would be the flip side of it. Okay, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break, but coming up, we will talk further with Audley about the Brexit referendum, and we may even have a live performance today. This year, the 100 Black Men of London is 15 years old. That's 15 years of impacting thousands of lives through our amazing programs on economic empowerment, health and wellness, and our fantastic accredited community mentoring program. I'm asking you to invest in the life of a young person. All of our work is done by unpaid, passionate and committed members and volunteers, which means your money will go directly to transform the life of a young person. Please give 100 for the 100. 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 Welcome back to the show with all the Asud, motivational speaker, a poet, and founder of TCR Arrow. You are a, a, a poet, yes. right? Can you tell us more about that? I got into performance poetry mm. um, to cure my fear of speaking before an audience. Um, but performance poetry is not mm. just merely reading a poem, yes. it's actually memorizing it, going before an audience, looking them into the eye, and performing your piece, and that takes guts. You know, yeah. to this day, even sometimes, I may get a bit nervous, all depends where yes. I'm at for whatever reason. But um, yes, I initially had a fear of speaking before an audience. Mm. I, you might know that uh, the fear of public speaking is the number one fear in the world. It's, you know, people fear public speaking more than they fear death. Well, so. well there's an academy which is called, um, I'm going to give it a plug, the Warren Ryan Fearless Speaking Academy. Yes, Warren, I gave you a plug on that one. You know, a mate of mine, so therefore, um, for people who want to do that, they can go to the Fearless Academy. Yes, it's a plug for you, Warren. Okay, we normally like to sign off um, oddly by asking our guests, like, what is your favorite mantra? What's your favorite quote? What would you say is yours? You never fail until you give up. You never fail until you give up. Give me the reason behind that. Is there a story behind that? Well, it's, it's, it's simple. It's, my, it's a personal quote for myself. Yes. And I am a firm believer that anything is impossible. Mm -hmm. When Thomas Edison was the in the process of discovering the, the light bulb. Yes. He failed over 2,000 times. Yes. Now, if the world were waiting for me to develop the light bulb, we'd be in darkness. Yes. This man kept on pushing. And I use a personal thing for me, when I got injured on the job and was rushed to the emergency room, my heart had stopped beating for over five minutes. Yes. Two doctors were working frantically on me. Yes. One of the doctors said, that's it, we've lost him. The other doctor, said, no, let's give it one more try. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting before you because of one more try. And that led to the quote in which I just gave you. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of the reason why I decided to become uh, a motivational speaker, where I've yes. transitioned from poetry to motivational speaking. Yes. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that's it. You never fail until you give up. And that's a quote and a word from the Silver Show for this episode. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And Audley, listen, I want to thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Listen, um, to find out more, please do visit our website, silburn.com, and join in the discussion online with our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And finally, Audley, will you perform for us? Of course. Fantastic. Live in the studio. We used to be done for the revolution. Now most just one four revolutions on the rims that spent when they stop at the light with the lights on but still can see the light. I continue to recite my plight to set things right from the left with every breath that I take. Make no mistake, my protests are best and my words for the birds, but it's all kind of foul how we're living on the prowl. We call ourselves gangsters and pimps, but all I see are wanksters and rips. And who would ever figure? We, we call each other the N-word. It's the KKK of a different kind that's constantly weighing all my mind. This ain't a part of the grand design of what my father has to store for me. But as far as I can see, we even disrespect our queens by any means necessary. For many things are necessary. And you can check in just about any hip hop song. Now don't get me wrong, I love hip hop. But over the years, I watched it so hip, hop into another direction, correction. Hip hop is no direction. Law is like a compass without a needle. Because they took the wrong needle and put it on the rack and now chicky check, check this. There's no need for DJs to remix this. I'm just saying that we really need to fix this. Problem that we're in and we gotta begin from its end. While my brothers walk around with fancy cops drinking their favorite drink. I can't help but think, even though I'm not the wisest, how much it symbolizes. Those brothers are thirsting for knowledge they can't obtain in any college. So they put in gold and platinum inside their mouths to compensate for not enough worth coming out their mouths. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, the stress that we need to begin from within. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, the stress that we need to begin from within. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, the stress that we need to begin from within. Peace. I've been on the Silburn Show, and my life would never be the same. To find out why, Click on the link below. For the people in the place to be, my name is Sid and when you listen to me, oh, hi. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like, and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe here. Thank you. For the people in the place to be, my name is Sid and when you listen to me, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a mouthful, but um, shouldn't we, um, guys, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, this is crazy.